Hi, I'm Yusuf Munair, and I'm the Executive Director of the Jerusalem Fund for Education and Community Development. I happen to be Palestinian, uh, and I was actually born in a town that is today inside what is recognized as Israel. Uh, but I grew up mainly in the uh, United States, uh, uh, in uh, the greater New York City area, and uh, went to school in Massachusetts and in Maryland uh, before uh, coming to Washington, D.C. I think like uh, a lot of people, the decision to come to the States was one that was motivated by economics and, and opportunity. And, um, you know, we had, uh, we had an opportunity uh, to come to the States. My father actually was educated in the United States uh, and during that time um, got to know the country and um, was able to access some opportunities here uh, and had a better chance at uh, success in his life as a Palestinian living in America than he did as a Palestinian living in Israel and ultimately made the decision to come uh, with my mother and myself uh, to the United States. I don't think really the question is one state or two state. Um, I think those are questions that ultimately need to be answered and worked out by the people that are going to be living in whatever, whatever systems end up emerging. Um, but I think the focus needs to be on achieving a peaceful solution based on uh, justice. Uh, and for there to be any sort of justice, uh, or at least sense of justice, particularly on the Palestinian side, uh, Palestinians have to have, at a minimum, the same uh, human and political rights that Israelis do. Uh, and the two-state framework has created many obstacles uh, for realizing Palestinian rights, particularly the Palestinian right to return. The question is not, can we have a two-state outcome? I think the question is, can we have a two-state outcome that is at the same time a solution to this issue? Um, we could have a two-state outcome, a three-state outcome, a 12-state outcome. You can essentially impose any outcome by the use of force, and that's, that's really what the Israelis have been doing uh, over time. The question is, are those outcomes going to lead to peace? So really what we need to be talking about is solutions that can last and solutions that most approximate justice. And I think that uh, regardless to whether the outcome is, you know, in a binational state, in a secular state, in two states, as long as we can stick within that framework, uh, then uh, I think that whatever the outcome is, um, it, it will be it will be useful and it will be helpful for the people involved and for having a lasting peace. Um, but we can't start from there. Uh, I think we need to, to ground ourselves in, in a framework um, that is rights based. Uh, and you know where we go from there towards one state or two or three or, or, or whatever else, um, you know that that's a conversation that can evolve from there. Uh, but um, we have to focus on Palestinian human rights uh, and Israeli human rights as well. Uh, but if, if one people's rights is going to be viewed as uh, less important than the other, which is essentially what the two-state framework has put forward, uh, that you know, Israeli political rights to uh, ethnic majoritarianism trump Palestinian human rights to live on their own territory, uh, that framework is not going to lead to a peaceful outcome. We need to change the way we look at the situation. And looking at it through a framework of rights, I think, puts us in a much more productive space to have a conversation about a final outcome than anything else. When you look at this situation, you realize that there really, you know, th there, there are multiple players involved on the ground. But there is really one player that is the most uh, powerful on the ground, that has the, um, you know, the greatest potential, the greatest capacity to um, affect the situation. And that is the 
state of Israel. The state of Israel occupies Palestinian territory and it controls the entire territory um, from the river to the sea. Uh, and the Palestinian Authority, which exists within the West Bank, exists because Israel permits it to exist there. Um, so it is not autonomous, it is not sovereign, it is not independent. Um, so really, what needs to change is the behavior of the Israeli state. There needs to be costs introduced to the Israeli decision calculus. That means making the occupation more expensive. That means making Israeli colonial behavior more expensive. Right now there are no costs associated with this, no significant costs at least, uh, and there need to be. Now these can come in a variety of different ways. I think the most preferable and most efficient route uh, for these costs to come is through state level sanctions uh, and through you know multilateral engagement by international players. Um, whenever we've seen movement in this direction though, uh, these efforts have been stymied at the United Nations Security Council by uh, a veto coming from from Washington DC. And so the United States has acted as a protector for the Israeli occupation and a protector of a system that is eating up Palestinian land without costs. And the United States is continuing to ensure that Israel can occupy and colonize cost-free. So since state level sanctions, which again I think are the most effective and direct way of applying costs in this situation, seem to be out of the question there needs to be initiatives from non-state actors or in this case civil society and so we've seen and I support actions by civil society to impose costs on the Israeli state for its occupation and I think that movement the movement for boycott divestment and sanctions uh, is varied and has had um, success over the years and will continue to grow especially because states continue to refuse to get involved in placing costs on the Israelis for their occupation and colonization. Uh, and so if states are not going to be changing Israeli behavior in this way, then people are going to rise up and find ways of doing that. BDS is one of those ways. Uh, and I think that while it's, while it's not the most efficient way, it's really the only option that people have left. And they're going to continue to move in that direction uh, unless other alternatives present themselves. I, you know, I enjoy watching competitive sports every once in a while uh, and the, uh, the occasional um, news programs uh, that are more hard-hitting. I'm, I'm from you know, the New York area, so I'm, I'm a, uh, a Giants fan, a Yankees fan, uh, and uh, a New Jersey Devils fan, and a Brooklyn Nets fan as well.